And bam, welcome back to Nando Talk. We've got a twofer for the people. We've already done a little bit of a pumped up preview for the Dolphins Ravens game week two, where we go to MT Bank Stadium and hope to beat the Ravens and go 2 0. I've got the link for the video right here. You can watch it. It's about 20 minutes. It's a nice little preview before the injury reports, and then we'll dive in deeper in the weekend. But before then, there is an injury report that has come out that is a little sad to hear. Austin Jackson has been placed on IR and will miss the next four weeks. Ouch. You know, especially as a Miami Dolphin fan, we all know that the offensive line really dictates the success of your season. And we can't lose our blind side tackle after only one freaking week. I was hoping Austin Jackson was going to have his year three leap, you know, year three. He still can when he comes back, but missing four weeks is going to hurt a bit. It's a tad scary. You know, Teron Armstead is also dealing with a bit of a toe issue. I, I, the reports are he should be fine for Sunday, but it's just getting all too clear how little our tackle depth truly is. But hey, we're going to try to positive spin it because, you know, that's what we do here on Nando Talk. We always go for the positive vibes and let you know that everything is going to be fine. So let's do our best and try with the Dolphins offensive line, which has made me cry quite a few years in the past. But hopefully this year, things will be different. You know, we still do have Tron Armstead. As of now, the line will probably look like Tron Armstead, Liam Eichenberg, Connor Williams at center, who besides that little high snap was pretty fine um, on week one. Then we'll have Robert Hunt at right guard. And then at right tackle, replacing Austin Jackson is most likely going to be Greg Little who looked fine throughout the preseason and last week when he came in. Unfortunately, he as well got banged up a bit. I think he's going to be fine for Sunday and he's going to play. He'll be serviceable at right tackle. Definitely not the blind side tackle you hope for your quarterback. But hey, that this is the life of a lefty QB. Right tackles are usually never up to par as the left ones. So we're dealing with guys like Greg Little, who's serviceable. He's going to be fine. I think he'll do better than Jesse Davis did last year. We just got to hope that there's a cohesive unit. Please do remember, though, that this Dolphins offensive line was still gelling, and now it's just going to ask them to gel a little bit more. Not thankfully, but they at least were working a bunch of different offensive line combinations throughout the offseason. So there is a chance that this one has some work with it, that McDaniel and, and, the, and Applebaum have said, hey, this is the contingency plan. If Austin Jackson goes out, we elevate this, we move it around this way. I'm hoping it's as simple as just replacing the right tackle. There's a chance that maybe we end up having to move Eichenberg from left guard to right tackle and filling in a guard spot. Um, it's going to be interesting how it shakes out. As of now, the Dolphins only have seven offensive linemen. We're going to have to elevate some from the practice squad or sign someone. Most likely, we're going to elevate Larnell Coleman. It'll give us a little bit of depth. In the off, off, off chance that Greg Little's also too banged up to play or we don't see Teron Armstead, there is a chance that we're starting Larnell Coleman, who's going straight from practice squad to starter offensive lineman. That's a little scary. And that's what Dolphins fans are talking about, lack of depth, especially at the tackle position. I'm hoping this spurs us to make a bit of a move, make a play, but we'll see how this goes for the Dolphins. It seems like Abelwam's going to trust Greg Little, and he's going to trust the depth we have at offensive line. I'm not an NFL coach, so I have to assume that Applebaum and the boys know better than I do. I'm going to trust them in this one. And hey, Austin Jackson, I'm rooting for a speedy recovery for you because we're going to need you back. The pass protection last week and this offseason has seemed to have improved from the offensive line as a whole, especially from Austin Jackson. But the run blocking still leaves a little bit to be desired. Last week, we didn't really see much of room to run. And if the offensive line this week, is a little bit not to full health and still getting used to each other as it's yet another offensive line configuration. I don't see too, too much hope for the Dolphins offensive line producing more holes and letting our running backs go off. But Hey, I'm a hope guy. I'm a positive dude. So I'm still hoping for a hundred yards for Chase Edmonds and the boys a hundred yards from the running back room as a total would do a long way to start calming these fears. At least what we need is start averaging decent yards per carry getting the defense to respect a little bit more that there is a rushing element to be feared on this offense. I know it's Mike McDaniel's bread and butter, and he's going to want to get back to it, which is why I'm not too worried that it's going to write itself out, even with Austin Jackson on IR. Um, as for the passing, we had 270 yards last week, a touchdown. We did see a bit what the offensive line looks like without Austin Jackson and without Greg Little, honestly. So I'm not – like I said, too afraid. That being said, the Ravens defense is better than the Patriots. They have a much better secondary. They do have some big boys up front as well. 
So I'm a little afraid of how our, the Dolphins are going to handle the pass rushing, especially considering that when Tua rolls out, he's not a, he becomes not the best. He's, his, that his penchant for accuracy when he's is fine from the pocket, and it's actually kind of awesome to see him anticipate and just drop things in the bread basket. But when he's rolling out and he's facing that extra pressure play after play after play, it's tough on any QB. And if he's going to be in that situation all Sunday, it's we're in for a long one. And then in that case, we will really have to rely more on the running game. I hope the offensive line can hold up. If they don't, bring in Tyree Kill and Waddle, let them come in a little closer, and then just do some crossing routes, do some little short routes, and let them do the dirty work and take it to the house, take it for big plays, get the yak, 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 and attack, attack, attack. That'll be a fun one to see. Do the same with Edmonds and Mostert. They were looking nice in space last week. Let them keep doing some work. If we do get some ability to hold hold up the offensive line, create a bit of a pocket and some time for Tua, and we can stretch the field and send guys deep, by all means, do it. I'm all for it. Let's go. Let's see Tua, man, launch the deep ball. It'll keep the defense honest, prevent them from stacking the box, and in the long run, prevent them from just dialing up too much pressure for Tua if they respect the pass. So it'll be key to do that early on. Those would be the main keys early on. I need to see if the Dolphins are capable of controlling the, the line of scrimmage, if the offensive line can create some time and make a pocket for Tua, and which will in turn open up a run game and open up our passing. If that happens against the Ravens, it puts me a lot more at ease for what's going to happen against the Bills, especially against the, the Bengals. And then I'm not afraid of the Jets' D-line whatsoever. Um, I think the Dolphins have to, though, build that confidence and build that sense of offense here in week two in Baltimore. The boys can do it. It's going to be a massive game. I'm hoping the O-line holds up. Austin Jackson, I hope for a speedy recovery from you, man. And I hope for the best for Greg Little and filling in your role. And if need be, Larnell Coleman or whoever else we sign. But the fact of the matter is, this is a new Dolphins offensive line. Injuries have already begun, but injuries happen to everyone. We're literally facing a Ravens team that has half their cornerbacks on injured. It's it's tough for everyone out here, guys. So, hey, that's as positive as I can make it for us losing our blind side tackle. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a lo- like and a comment. Let me know how I did. Let me know what you think about the offensive line, what you're hoping for to see. And most importantly, if you could subscribe, that'd be awesome. This is the 101st video. Last episode was 100. It was That's why it's a twofer for the people. But, hey, we just got to 350 subscribers also. It'll be awesome to keep going up. Hopefully we get that support. And I hope, most importantly, though, that you enjoyed the Nando talk. Bada beam, bada bam. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, live on Thursdays, 3 p.m. You dig?